Hello, hello everyone. I am here. It is so good to be here. I'm sorry I'm running late. I <laughs> I was here. I just couldn't get on. I, sometimes this thing acts up. I don't know what causes it. When I go to visit my son, maybe he'll have a few minutes to try to help me figure out what the heck I'm doing. And in doing so, wouldn't that be fun if I could have a brief live thing while I'm with him? So I will let you know. Let me go really quickly and post this on the site so any of you who have been here looking for me can find <gasps> Sonia, you did find it. Fantastic, darling. Wonderful. I'm sorry, I don't, it, it was trying to open in my, the OBS system, which I don't know the OBS system yet. So, um, that presents a problem. Cheryl Hogan is here. Hello. All right, here we go. Let's see. Let me real quickly, so here we are. Okay, I just want to post this on our site real quick because that should help people get in a little easier. I don't know how this works since I'm on this end of it, but... I care very much that you find it. And I'm sorry that this is this cost us a few minutes of time together. But I'm so glad to see you. Hello, hello, hello. And let me go ahead and close this out and come back to you. Okay. Thank you so much. Happy Mother's Day to everyone who has a child now or who knew the love of a child. And um, it's it's a pretty... It can be a wonderful job, and it can be the hardest job you ever knew that existed. But it is so good to see you. I'm glad to see all of you. And uh, y'all are just the best. And uh, love seeing, love, love, love seeing my Sonia here. And Cheryl, Laura, Kathy Klein, this is exciting. So I'm going to, I've got, the butterfly and uh, the butterfly and my dragonfly to show you. I managed to calm down and be a big girl and go back and try to finish them calmly. And it worked. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I think we blame our sewing machine a lot of times for what we are doing wrong because we're either rushing or behind or something. So I'm so glad to see you. I'm going to move over a second to let you see my new garden gate. And um, I redid the top of the rail so it would look less like a barn and more like a fence. But I've got to be honest, I have been so busy of late that I haven't really had time to finish it. So when I come back, from um, seeing my grandbabies, I'll make sure to get caught up on a few things, hopefully. <laughs> I, you know, it's hard to promise. Now that the world is opening back up, it's trickier. In fact, do you see? I had my hair professionally cut, so it's all even and no weird things are happening. Well, if they are, it's my own fault from the styling it. But Sandra, Dama is here. Hi, sweetie. So anyway, well, let's maybe we'll just start a couple things and then I'll show you things as I go. I hope you won't mind, but I need to I need to finish pressing my strips because today we're going to do this woven basket. And I thought. This would be something fun for us to work on in our Women's Cel Celebration Day or our Sister Day, Sisterhood Day. Hello, everyone. So I've got a few things to show you. And notice my cards back there. Let me see if I can zoom in. 
I've got a couple cards from some members and from my daughter. So thank you so much. My daughter Becky gave me a birthday. I, I almost call it a spa day. Oh, in fact, what am I thinking? I got a little distracted because it was hard to get on here. But my daughter first gave me a manicure with these cool things. Whoops, let me go back out. You don't really want to see me up that close. But my daughter did these. They're this cool thing. They're like little vinyl things that fit on your nails. I like them. Kathleen Ziegler made it. Yay. And then after she did my nails, she did a henna thing. And she hand paints this with a special, looks like a miniature icing tube. And look at this beautiful. Isn't that amazing? I wish my hands weren't so wrinkled so you could see it without the wrinkles. But hey, I turned 65 yesterday. So wahoo, I'm here. I'm enjoying it. But I had a wonderful, oh my gosh, Annette Parsons, how great to see you. How wonderful. And I just wanted to show this for a special person. Thank you so much. But didn't she do a beautiful job? She just looks at a picture and does it. I mean, that's amazing. Now, let me try to tighten up my skin so you can see it better. <laughs> Whoops. Let me see. Okay, here we go. <laughs> But isn't that just beautiful? Oh, thank you, sweetie. I got my Medicare all done, decided. I am happy. Oh, thank you, sweetie. And Kathleen, I will be getting back to you in an email about the Rick Rack. I just have, yesterday, I spent all day with my daughter. I was gone from the house from... 10, 10.30 till almost, almost 10 o'clock last night. And we had a great day. It, oh, thank you. And you like my birthday hands between the nails she did and the henna. Oh, my gosh, is that beautiful. And, um, but now since we have both of our, both of us have been vaccinated, we can be together. I cannot tell you how much I missed that. That was a very, very hard thing this last year is being away from the people we love. So we went to a farmer's market and she made me some fancy little meals and I got to enjoy the new house where she's living. And so it was wonderful. And I thank you. And this coming up week, I'm going to get ready and travel. So I've been a little busy. But it is, oh, I'm so glad you like it. My daughter did it. So, but I had, I had a good day. It was a good, good day. And it was my very first, I have to be honest, on the way home in the car, it was a little hard driving at night because I have done very little driving the last year. Oh, thank you, Miss Diana. Same to you for Mother's Day, sweetheart. I tell you, it, I got a little unnerved. And by the time I got home, I was just a little gefletched. <laughs> so it's hard going out in the real world. And if you're having any issues with it, don't feel guilty. As much as I want to be with my family members, it's hard. It's hard leaving the safety of home. I'm used to having my chair my kitchen, my bathroom, and going out is a little shaky. So be gentle on yourself. Give yourself extra time. Tell yourself it's okay. You've done it before. You can certainly do it again. When I was 18 years old, I drove myself to Mississippi to see a boyfriend all by myself with very little money in my pocket. And you know, I know it's been a number of years, but that that spirit is still inside me. And I just have to gently coax it out a little bit. And uh, the hardest thing is as you get older, you know all the things that could happen and might happen. And 
probably won't happen, but we worry. So just give yourself, be gentle to yourself right now. I know I started this show two years ago saying, do something kind for yourself. Do something just for you. Because as women, we tend to do stuff for everybody else and we forget about us. So especially during this time with the vaccinations and getting back out, be gentle to yourself. But please, if you haven't had a vaccination, is there anything I can say to talk you into it? Because the thing is, yes, less than 1% of people who are vaccinated might get what they call a breakthrough um, infection of the virus. But guess what? They don't die from it. They don't get horribly sick from it. Most don't even know. So do me a favor. Keep yourself safe. You mean everything to me. And keep your, your family safe, the people you love safe. That vaccination was a piece of cake. I would do it again tomorrow. It truly was a piece of cake. And I'm grateful because now I can get back out in the world without that dreaded fear. Did any of you have that just sense of impending doom during the last year with this virus out there? And that's been lifted. That alone is worth it. So I love you bunches. Take good care of yourself. That's for sure. Now let's get over here. Let me iron these so that we can make this basket. And I've got a board to do it on because I think it'll be much easier if I have a board and use push pins. And I made up these stripes, yes, these, these strips of fabric by doing a double fold. I made them up while I was over at my daughter's house, but I forgot to iron them. And, you know, my new favorite thing is... This wonderful method of making the strips. And I found these on Amazon for about $7. And that really helps. But I also tried this steam machine too. And it was a newer package than what I had had before. And it really worked well. It's a half inch by a few yards, 20 yards. Boy, I used a lot of it. Each of the strips I cut, now the, the directions say two and a half inch strips. Well, the, the strips that I had that came from pineapple fabrics weren't quite two and a half inches. So I didn't worry about it. I just said I'm making the strips the, the, the length or the width that I can make them. So I did the double fold and then let me show you one before I iron it. But what I did is then inside of it, I used that steam machine too. But you can use glue. You can use, cut your own strips of fusible if you wish. What I'm doing right now is I'm ironing them in a pile because if I do that, then, um, and they'll stay, they'll keep each other warm. I just love this henna on my hand. And I think it came from a tradition in India where women had a henna, henna done on their hand. They were brides. And until the henna wore off, they were to be spoiled and waited on. And uh, so I think that that's a really neat concept. But see all these different strips? I didn't have enough in my leftover bag. I've used so, all those strips up I got from Pineapple Fabrics. In fact, a couple things about Pineapple Fabrics. They are today having 15% off. And if you spend $40 or more, she'll give you a sample baggie of the strips. I think they call them Dottie's scrap something like that and uh, they came in so handy I wove the baskets out of them where I wrapped the strips around rope um, and now I'm going to um, 
I'm going to do an actual basket weaving. And I hope I get it right. I haven't. I took basket we, a basket weaving class 20 years ago. And the last basket I made was probably 18 years ago. So let's see how I do. But anyway, I'm getting the last of these done really quickly. Then this is a piece of foam core board. Just, I love foam core. I tell you what, when you're able to get out to a store, buy yourself some foam core. And this one's wrapped with a flannel. So I'm hoping it will help me make my basket easier. All right. My pile here is getting a little high, so I might have to move beside it just a touch. But this is the only chance I have to seal the fusible in the strip. So I better do a good job of it because once I weave it, if it pops open, I've got to hand sew it. And who wants to do that? Not me. But aren't these strips beautiful? I just love all the different colors. I had to cut a few more from my own fabrics and to make sure I had enough because you need 20 of these strips to do this basket. All right, so I'll get this done. Then I'm going to show you a few other things, and then we'll come back. I'll give this a chance to cool down. Then, whoops, this one, I must have run out of sealant on that one. So for just now, I'm just, I don't, I don't want to take the time to put a strip on it. So for right now, I'm just going to take some good old tacky glue and glue that down. And that will work just fine. You know, around here, I like to teach you, use what you have. Because I am a frugal person. I like to try everything. But I have to make my money go. I mean, if you, if you can afford to do it whichever way you can, then that is wonderful if you can just go and shop. But for people like me who are on a budget, there's so many things I love in this world. And so to be able to do everything I love, I have to find a way to do it on a budget. So that's, and you know what? I kind of like living that way anyway. And don't forget, um, I don't believe Susan's going to be here today. So please don't forget, if you try to want to get my attention, if you want me to see a question or a comment, type it in all caps. Because then I will be able to see it better. I found out the other day when I had my eye checkup that the reason I could see all of a sudden without my reading glasses, the reason I can read without them, is because my cataract got worse. I thought maybe I was rejuvenating. Oh, no, nothing that lucky. <laughs> I wasn't rejuvenating all. It was just my cataracts got worse. So I have decided now I'm just going to let these sit for now. But that part is done. But I found out that my cataracts are much, my left cataract, my right one's still the same, fine, no problem. My left cataract has gotten worse, so I'm going to have that surgery done. And I wanted to thank everybody who gave me some advice, including B in England. Because, you know, it's best to go into anything knowing all the information. So thank you, all of you. I'm going to go, oh, my gosh, look how many people are here. This is wonderful. Uh, and, um, yes, we're celebrating women. Hello, Miss Marsha. And we are celebrating women today. And Polly is here. And, uh, yes, that's henna on my hand. My daughter did a henna. Um, I don't know if you want to, I don't, are they called henna tattoos? But she did this yesterday for me. And it is lovely. He had a fit. <laughs> Mark was like, why do you want to do that? But you know what? I wanted to do it. And my daughter is so talented. She did this. It's, it's this, this, the mixture is in a tube, like a miniature cake decorating tube. And she did this looking at a picture. She did this. and. She said, oh, you'd probably be good at this. Uh-uh. I, I tell you, do you know how hard I work 
on doing the Pasanki eggs. I could never, I watched her and she just did it so easily. It's amazing. But I, I think the girl's very talented. So I, I think it's beautiful. And you know what? If a husband doesn't like it, then wait a couple of weeks. It'll be gone. <laughs> So, it is so good to see all of you. Yes, in fact, my husband fed, um, this morning, Mark, fed Kiwi and Finny the birds for me, which is such a treat. You know, I mean, it might not seem like much to some people, but just that, that thoughtfulness. And yesterday when I was over at, at Becky's, he vacuumed the house for me. Now. That was my job to do because he's been working out in the yard and on the camper and stuff. And lately I've been so stressed and busy to come home to a clean house was the biggest gift of in the world. So this is so nice. Yours was hand painted too, Polly. It's really cool. So I'm glad, I'm glad that she did it. And she let me pick out the design from some photos she had. And it's kind of cool. It's something different. And she even did these vinyl things on my nails, which how nice and easy is that? So I'm going to check out the store for some of these, let me tell you. But anyway, okay. So let me show you a couple little things I got. And, and I pointed out the beautiful cards, two from members and two from my kids. And I appreciate that. All right, now even bring over, I'm going to show you what I do with my dragonfly once it's done, okay? Well, I think now I've got what I need. All right, and I was showing everyone my garden gate that I put the new tops on. So let me see if I can get in there closer. See how I did the gate tops? Now, I haven't finished. I've got to put some more sky around it. But I think it looks so much better. Oh, thank you, Kathleen. And so, but I'll have, hopefully, I will have some time after I've traveled. And then I can finish it up and show you the couple ideas I have. But I wanted to show you, I put in an order to, I needed to get some new sunglasses because I had noticed that in the glare, um, I, I have a hard time see, seeing and I was unhappy. I've been lately, I've not been wanting to go out in the sun. It's like too bright. So I knew I needed some really good sunglasses and some polarized. And I found them online because if I'm going to be doing driving, I better have good eye protection. But while I was on there, I got these. And these are a kind of slippery washer to help prevent the spool back or, you know, when sometimes you're sewing quickly, like doing thread painting and your bobbin kind of catches. So got these and then, and they are a different brand. They're not the ones you mostly think about, but they're cheaper. So I just thought I'd tell you, I like to, I, I, don't, I have nothing against name brand. I love, I love supporting our quilt shops, our local stores, all of that. What I do though, is just try to show you a way that might be a little easier on our budget, because I don't know if y'all have noticed, but gas prices have gone up some, food prices are going up and we kind of just need to take care of each other. Then I ordered this while I was there. What a good deal this was. It was like $14 and it's three packs of five sheets each. And remember I told you when I used the, steam, the light steam machine too, I had a problem with it really sticking and it's probably something I'm doing wrong. So this time I ordered the non-light version, hoping that this will have a stronger adhesive. Because whatever I'm doing, I kind of, I can't get it to hold the way I want. So, and I've been known, I want the strongest, biggest, whatever. I, I, I'm that way. So, anyway, so I got that. Can't wait to use it. I'll let you know what the difference is. Then, 
I joined back. Hello, jo Dolores. Oh, Dolores, I've got your couple of your pictures to show today. Oh, good, Marsha. So this is wonderful. Then I rejoined um, American Quilt Society. Am I saying that right? I think that's right. Um, I had let it lapse because I wanted to get big old tires. Isn't that the truth? And uh, I know money has just been, oh, and then there's another problem. He couldn't get the slide to go out right. He's trying to fix that. And it's like, okay, what else is going to break? Go ahead. Let me know now so I can have my hissy fit. But I have been waiting to join the American Quilt Society to look for a sale on membership. And I found one. And when I joined, it said, you can choose between these two free books. I thought it would be some downloadable thing. Oh, no, it's a book. And um, the thing I'm going to like about it is I think I'll be able to make um, copies on the copy machine. And then I can cut them like stencils. You know, maybe I can, oh, I printed it on stencil material. That would be cool. Because what I would like to do is see if I can cut some stencils and then use my pounce pad to mark some of these things. If not, I'll just look at it, practice it on a whiteboard to get my muscle memory. But I thought that was really nice. That's a, that's a, a nice, good book. So thank you, American Quilt Society. And honestly, the main reason I like being a member of it is they have so many great ideas in their newsletter and things for members. But also, I love their AQS magazine. It's of the two magazines I treasure. It's Quilting Arts and the AQS. And I really like them. I like all the things that they include. So that's, you know, anymore, I don't belong to a whole lot of things. I've really cut back. But that what I thought was important. And my daughter went on my Amazon list and got me these. And I'm so tickled because I, I'm thinking about really getting it, trying to do fabric painting. You know, I've done fabric dyeing, and that's a lot of work. But I'm really curious to see if I'm up to fabric painting. I used to paint with acrylics. I tried oils, yeah, and I love acrylics, and I'm curious to see how I do with these. So thank you, my Becky, for getting me those. She also got me a two pound bag. Of cinnamon, like they call red hots. Woo, baby. Um, I had put them on my list because Mark had gotten some in a gift, a work gift he got. And I really like those little things. And the nicest thing is you can't eat too many. And uh, and it's just, it, it was, I just thought, gosh, I didn't realize these were so good. So she got me a two pound bag. So that'll last me a year, I'm sure. So anyway. So that is great. So now let's look at what we do after this. I've got my butterfly and I'm going to do the last little bit just to kind of give you some hints on how to do these. And this, just to go back just a touch, you can use a super solvy. You can use any kind of, I've got two kinds. I've got a smooth kind, and then I've got this one that has more of a kind of like grain to it. And I recommend when you use this to use two layers, because when you do a butterfly, especially, you're doing some heavy stitching in the same place. And so if you use two layers in your hoop, you're less likely to tear through it, okay? If you do tear through it, don't panic. You can cut another little piece, wet the edges, stick it underneath, and it will seal to it and then keep going. So but this is something I just loved doing. And I don't remember seeing it done. Maybe I did, but I just thought, I know I can do that. 
So, and it's all done freehand on the regular domestic sewing machine. Okay. So now, here is my dragonfly. And I put a more pronounced head on him. And I finished all of the wings. So this one is done and ready to go. Ah, oh, busy cutting strips for the garden. Oh, okay. So now you put it in water. This happens to be cool water. Usually I use warm water, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. And you can feel when, whoops, let me move it this way. You can feel when the water soluble stabilizer starts working. In fact, you can see right here, because remember the little antenna, they become a little heavy. And uh, let's see, looks like I'm gonna have to cut the, somehow they, these got so close together, they kind of grew into each other. So cut them apart. And don't worry when they're all floppy. Remember, I have a plan for that. And so I just let it wet it, rub it just a little, till you'll feel a little bit of stickiness. And what you just want to do is just rub a little bit until that stickiness starts to go away. Okay. Then I get a thick pad of paper towels like this. Now I only, I only rub a little because I like the salvi to stay on there because I like making these dimensional. So now I take, I take the, other paper towels and I press on it. And I'm gonna move this bowl of water because I know myself, I will spill that. So move that out of the way. All right, there we go. Now this takes a lot of the water out and don't worry about these little antenna. So what I'm gonna do is turn this paper towel over to a drier side. I might curl the tail. I think that might be really cute. And then I'll put this antenna out. And in fact, they're supposed to curve around. So you might have to kind of curve them back on your own. See like that. And let me see now if I can get this one straight. And be careful with them. They are fragile. In this stage, they're very, very fragile. So I don't know what this thread is doing, but all right, so just circle them around, put them in, in some kind of shape that you like, because this is what shape they'll want to stay in once they're dry. And don't worry if the little threads stick out because you can trim those later. And even this, it looks a little thin here. So I may have to go back over it afterwards. But for right now, I don't know why this thread's over here, but I'm going to nip it apart this way because I don't want to pull it. I don't want to stress the little threads. So I probably should have given this side another, what I do is I zigzag up and zigzag back. And I should have zigzagged a little bit more on this one. I can fix it either with a, a sewing needle by hand, or I can wait until it's dry and I can go back over it. Now, if you're worried it'll get all bunched up under the machine, then just go ahead and lay another piece of salvi under it just to have it attached. So, all right. So then I've curved the tail. Now what I'm going to do is I want some shape for the wings. And this is when, this is when you can shape the wings. So I'm going to take this paper towel and I'm going to put it under the wings and then bend them down. Okay. Okay. 
like that. All right. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the other side. Hello, Patricia. All right. Now, I'll put this one over here on this side and then kind of dip the wing tips down just a little bit and keep him in pretty good position. Now, then I'll let him dry. And if his tail and if his antenna are too weak, like they, they, they're not rigid enough, I will do what I did to this one. And that is I will take glue and rub glue along. See how now they're better? I rubbed glue, let it dry, rub glue, let it dry. I probably did it three or four times. And that way now I have them, they're still delicate, but they're stiff enough. But see how I, do you, can you see how I shaped this one? And that's by just taking out half of the salvi instead of rinsing it thoroughly out, taking off, taking out half of the salvi and then letting it dry. And if I let it dry like this, then it will keep that shape. All right, so now I showed you what to do when you finished it. Now let's show you right here. And come on. All right, so I've got the, I've got the uh, butterfly in the hoop. Now let me show you something really quickly. I was going to show you more of this, but I had so much hard time with it. I said, let me do most of it off camera. That way at least you won't hear my cussing. So here is the solving. You have to draw on it with a Sharpie or permanent marker. Because if you use water base, it will melt this salvi, or I shouldn't say uh, water soluble stabilizer. And this is a stabilizer people use for embroidery. And if you have done this or been taught this and you know a better way, please always share it with our group. Because I'm mostly self taught, and so there might be a better way to build this mousetrap. But anyway, so I outlined my butterfly and a couple times I had the salvi break away and I had to see how I've had to patch different pieces on it. So don't worry if you have to do that. And, and I just, in fact, where I got too much water, little holes opened up. But anyway, so now the hardest part really is getting it under you got to really get your presser foot up. You may have to take off your little presser foot to get it under. And you see how the way I laid it, I put the drawing, the right side is inside the hoop. Normally it would be on this side, but you have to have something to slide it against. So I've done everything here. And remember, you're making, it's like a lace making. And so what you have to do is make sure that you have um, enough stitching so that when the salve is rinsed off, then it goes away. I, I just realized I have no orange here, and I want to cut this out and show you. So soon as I do this body, I'm going to come in with orange thread. And I love using rayon for this because I love that shine, that shimmer. Okay, it reminds me of a real butterfly. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down and finish the rest of his body. Here is part of the upper body. And now I want to finish down here. I'm going to put, I've got a zigzag foot on here. I'm going to set my tension just on the little bit lower side. I'm going to have my stitch length down to no more than one or even a little under one. And then my width, let me see, let me start out at almost four on this one. Some of my narrow lines are down to like 1.8. And, uh, but this, I just want to make a clean, 
body look down. And I just kind of hold it and guide, guide it through. Now, I'm going to go back and look. Okay, that's good. It needs to be wider. So now I'm going to go ahead and come up to five or five, maybe five and a half. All right. Now, let me come in here. And sometimes I have my finger resting on the width button so that I can make it narrower and then gradually come out wide and then go back in. Now I'm going to take the width and put it all the way to the maximum, which is seven on my machine, because I want a nice wide stitch for the bottom. Now let me see. I don't see thread being put down. It's not being. So it, now my bobbin still has it, but the thread is not in my needle anymore. So let me back up at some point. It popped out, and it does that when you do this. So, come on, needle threader, work for me here. All right. Okay. Now, let's do this. Let's do it again. And what you'll notice that it's like you can't really, it's hard to tell exactly what you're doing. But when you see that no more thread is being laid down, you need to go back. And I will go back and forth over this as many times as I need to. Now I'm going to taper down on the body towards the point of the bottom of his body. So I've got to bring the stitches in. I kind of hold it firm so it'll do a lot of stitches at the end. Okay, now let me see how this is looking. So see how I, I, see how I tapered it down? So that's pretty good. I need to fill in a gap right here. So let me go back and do a little bit of this. Let's say that it starts to um, pull away or you notice it's not touching. Just go back and fill in those, um, those areas. In fact, right here, I'm going to do some more on this edge just because it didn't quite look like it was sticking up on this edge, okay? All right. All right, I'm thinking, I'm thinking I've got it all now. But see, it's just that simple. Now I, I just need to put some orange right here. So let me quickly change my thread. And this, the black, I just used regular Coates and Clark. I use whatever I have on hand. And I'm the first one. If somebody's trying to get rid of thread, boy, I grab it. I don't care what it is. Because for thread painting and for this kind of stuff, you care about the colors. You don't care exactly what kind it is or just what colors. So, whoops. Let me make sure. Okay. Coming back down. And then as soon as I'm done with this little swath, and you could do birds this way. Miss Dolores does the most amazing machine embroidered birds and animals. She did her, um, she did her raccoon this way. And then that way when you're done and you rinse out part of your sulky, then you can shape it and she shaped the little hand like it was coming out of the jeans so cute but so realistic it scared me all right i'm gonna go back down to i'm gonna start this really narrow so i'm gonna go down to like 1.8 all right and i'm gonna go a ways and you just kind of you don't want to hold it back too much but just enough to really fill it in thickly now i'm going to go up to three and then at, I'm going to keep coming up and then go down real quick to a point. Let's see. All right. I've added the stripe of orange, which you can't see quite good enough, but it's there. Don't worry. In fact, I'll do another little strip of it right here. So let me start down about 1.9 or 1.8 and then I'll start to come up just a little bit more here all right and then I'll stop 
And then I'm going to come over here. Where I had filled in with brown, sometimes you'll cover up some things. So no problem. Just go back and put it on because it's okay to build this up thickly. Then you know it'll be more steady or sturdy. Okay. Let's see how this one works. And if I ever get a line too thin, then just come back in and thicken it up. Like this one over here, I'm going to thicken this one up. So I'm going to turn it up a little higher and go back in. There's no, you can't really mess this up unless you rip it up so badly that you can't tape it back together. I mean, I had the other day when I was working on this and I had such a rough time of it. Oh my gosh, I had holes the size of a quarter in in the inner interface. And I don't I wish you could see. I mean, this whole part was it this one maybe. This whole part opened up and let me get the light. But this all opened up. And so all I did was put another piece of, you know, glued it using water, put another piece. You can see how many different pieces I've added to save it. And there it is. I was able to save it. And in one place, I had to come back over because pulling it together made the stripe in the wrong place. So anyway, all right. So now, okay. Now, Let's show you what, what do we do next? All right, so you're going to go ahead and take it out of the hoop. And I am going to now get up in here close and just make sure if you had little embroidery scissors that are curved, this would be even better. But just try to cut off most of these threads. It's easier to do it now when the piece is laying flat and, you know, it's relatively stiff like paper. So just do your best at cutting off any little threads, neatening it up. And because you'll have, you know, you can't do embroidery with having bunches of little threads that need to be cut off. And because, you know, I, I work in one place and then just, I don't always cut my thread in between. So this is looking pretty good. You know, I could do a little bit more, but I'll get it later. So now I've neatened up my thread. Here's what the back looks like, because I just put gray bobbin thread in the back. I don't waste my color thread on the when I do this by using it on the back, too. Gray is my neutral. Now I go around the edge with the scissors. I do not um, cut into the edge. Because you need, let me bring this lamp over, you need these outer edges. I did an outline stitch first, and then everything else I tied into the outline. You need that outline so that it holds the piece together. So you just, you come right up to it, because you don't want to have to rub and soak it very long. You come right up to it, but not cutting into the threads. And you just nip this off. Now, if you do marine, machine embroidery, then you probably already know all about this. I'm sorry, this is all new to me. I've never done, I don't have an embroidery machine. I've never done it. So this is new to me, but I love it. And it's so much fun. You can just think of anything that you could make on this that you can add as a fun touch to a quilt. And this will be for my garden gate. My dragonfly is going to be for my mosaic koi. And it's fun to make a little signature. This is kind of my signature thing. I have made these for several quilt, butterflies for several quilts because people love dragonflies and butterflies. So anyway. I just quickly try to cut this so you don't get bored and quickly cut it, cut around this body best you can without trimming it off. And, you know, if I were to accidentally cut one of the bottoms of these tails off, I could always put it back on Salvi 
or another piece of this soluble stabilizer. Like right there is a little bit of stabilizer that comes out past the tail. Get that extra off so you don't have to spend much time rubbing it, especially where it's kind of delicate. Um, but anyway, to make a long story short, um, get it as close as you can so you don't have to do much rubbing. But you, any point that you're not happy with it, before you have rinsed it, you can put it on another piece of salvia and go in and, and fix what you don't like. And because now that I found the key to wetting it and making it, gluing it with water, you can go back at any point and save your work. I thought I was going to have to throw this away. Nope, I saved it because, okay, that area just has a little more thread on top. But you would have no idea that this thing had opened up in three places. And I mean, gaping open. So save your scraps because I used my scraps to glue the pieces back together. Now, I'm leaving a little more of this stabilizer on the antenna because I am not going to try to wash it off the antenna. Whatever comes off in the soaking and the drying stage is probably enough for these delicate little antenna. So here we go. Now it's cut out. Save these scraps for patches. Because I, if I if I had I bought this stabilizer secondhand, but I think it is normally kind of expensive. So all right, so here it is, and it's pretty well trimmed up. Let me do a little bit better down here, but it's pretty good. All right, now let me get my bowl of water back. And put it in my bowl of water. I let it sit there just a minute so it gets really saturated. All right. Ah, some people use netting. What a great idea to give it a little bit of like a mesh background. That's great. So like a tool, something that's got a little... Okay, and I'm, notice I'm not touching the antenna. I'm doing the rest of this, and mainly it's so that I can get rid of any that was sticking past the edge. And uh, just so you don't feel that there's a little bit of a slime that can come off at first, the excess of the salvi. All right, so see, I... I do very little. I spend very little time in the water because I like, okay. All right. Let me put my paper towel down here. I'm going to carefully lay out my cute little antenna. Antennae. Okay. And just kind of want to stretch. Now right here, whoops. Do you see right here, I didn't have it firmly attached enough. So what I'm going to do now is just kind of push it back up against the wing because the leftover salvi that's in it will kind of glue it in place for me. All right. So pull everything out into a good position. But that's, what, that's why it, if you use netting, I can see where that would help prevent this because... You have to make sure you do enough zigzaggy looping over every piece to connect it. And it has to be fully connected for it to stay together once the stabilizer is no longer in it. And I love it looking kind of airy and see-through. So you just have to be careful how you do it. Now, I'll probably cut off a few more of these little threads later. And so now I turn it over to a dry side of the paper towel and now goes the molding stage to get it to the shape you want so that when it dries, you've got the cute little butterfly that you want. So, okay, see how I stick that there? 
because it's still a little sticky and that you like that. That's that little part of the stabilizer still in there. And you just have to get it in the shape you want. Okay. Now, I think, let me find something kind of, I think I might use something like this under this one. So it's not quite as, not quite as obvious. Then I think I'll use a straw here. So I'll let these stay down there. Whoops. All right. Let's see how I kind of just press it into the shape. And then when it's all dry, Next time we're together, I will show it to you. Push the head down so the antenna stay down. And you don't have to make the antenna perfect the first time because remember, you're going to have to put glue on them. Consecutive layers of glue that dry and make them stiff enough. Okay, whoop, let me put this straw back under this side, whoops. And they just need to draw in that dry, I mean, in this shape so that you will get the effect you want, which is I want them to look real and in motion. Okay. All right. I'm going to move this out of the way. And there is that. All right. Now, I had hoped to have more done on my binding tool star today. I've just been running too short a time. But here is the color that I chose to be on my inner stripe. When I looked, let me show you this, because y'all voted and I chose, I went, I chose from those two colors. And what I did is I spread it out, looked at it, and noticed that the colors I liked best were the pale sea glass kind of colors. And so once I looked at this, then I thought that did a better job of kind of portraying the light washed look colors. So thank you. It was from the two colors and I picked the lighter of the two colors you chose. So thank you. And when I have time, I will finish this and show you. All right, so that was that decision was made. Now it is. Let me see what you've said. And then is Michelle here? Michelle, happy Mother's Day, Michelle. That's wonderful, sweetheart. Oh no, I didn't see that last night. I I do love um Attenborough. And let me see. He had a brother. It was Richard was the actor, and I think David is the one who does the nature. So, oh, Katie was here. Hi, my Katie. So good seeing my Katie girl. I'm going to be up visiting her in just a few days, so I can't wait. Oh, thank you. That was so sweet, Laura. I'm lucky to have her, let me tell you. That's the way it goes here. All right, so... Oops, I better move my dragonfly too, because I don't want, I've got him shaped just right. He's drying pretty quickly, so that's cool. All right, got that done. Now we'll move over to here. Oh, that was so neat to see Katie popping in. And here we go. All right, let's move over here. It is so good to see you, Miss Michelle. I know you're having a busy day.
but I tell you what, I was telling them how wonderful is it to be able to celebrate ourselves and get the vaccinations. And yesterday I spent my first day with Becky that in uh, 15 months, I guess. Um, okay, so we're making the woven fabric basket. In fact, let me turn on this light. I think it would help me today. We'll see. Okay, so here is the fabric basket. And you'll see here, this is one of the ways they did it. And what I did is I took my strip and I folded it in half. And then I tucked in each side to fold it. So it, in this one right here. They have done, they used a lot of this stuff. I didn't. I just took and folded my strip in half and ironed it, then tucked in a quarter of an inch on each side. Then once I had it to that point where all it needs is one more fold, then once I had it that, then I put on the steam -a seam tape, then took off the paper, folded it in half, and you saw me iron the strips. Now what I'm going to do is this part, where I actually set up the weaving. So, let me get this in a good position. All right, let me see. All righty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some strips. The first thing I'm going to do is take three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. It does use all ten right away. So I'm going to pick out some strips and lay them this way. I wish I had more yellow and more green, but I'll make do. And then, all right, let's see. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, I'll try a green down here. And just so you know, I starched these first. And, um, and since this is going to be the bottom of the basket, put your pretty side up. Because no one cares. Or the prettiest side where it's going to be seen from the outside of the basket. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I need one more. I think a nice deep blue. Okay. Here we go. So now we have these all laid down. So now I'm going to take my first little strip right here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it on top of that one then I pick up this and I slide this up that way okay and then I'm going to pick up this pink one okay so I'm going over under over under that was actually easier <laughs> I'll do the same thing for this pink one, and then I'll do the same thing for this dark blue. Okay, so now I've got my first piece woven in there. Now it's time for my second one. And what you do, what the strength of the basket is that you then will... Um, do the next piece exactly opposite. So where this piece went under, let me get up a little closer, where this piece went under this one, this one's going to go on top. So then I'll pick up this one. Okay. Then where this went under, now it's going to go on top. And so every other one I pick up and slide this in place, okay? And you see how I did that real easy and fast. Then I will pull it up and get it even. These first two pieces have to be in the center both ways, meaning I have the same amount left from here to here, okay? 
All right. There we go. See that? So I have the same amount. And if you want to get a ruler, feel free to get a ruler and make, you know, do a little measurement. But I've gotten to where I can eyeball it pretty good, but that does look good. And here, yep, that's pretty good. All right, because with this is the only, you really have to start straight, tuck everything in nice and tight. That will help hold that together, okay? If you have any question, uh, any questions, right? Oh, there's Katie. Oh, I feel like I'm the lucky one. In fact, Katie, you'll notice your card is right here so that everybody can see it. I love, love, love it. And I just can't wait to be there. So, all right. So now, let's see. It's good to kind of lay out your strips so you can see what colors you have left. And that looks like, I think I'll go with this next. All right. So now the last one started where this went on top. So now this one will go under on that one. So I just lift up every other one and tuck it in. This is our women's celebration basket. Because we're pretty darn special. All right. And under, whoops, wait a minute. Hold on. Let me count it. I went under, so I go over, yep, then I go under, then I end up over, all right? I mean, this is really pretty easy, and don't let it get too overwhelming for you, and every time you finish, you get it in place, make sure you tuck it, make sure it's nice and tight, okay, so see that? Now, if you want, you could... It wouldn't hurt, oops, well, it would help if I turned it on, but it wouldn't hurt to take your iron and kind of press it, you know? You're just holding it into place. Let me move this out of the way. All right, but it's not a bad idea to take and press it because then you're just kind of, you know, keeping it all together. Oh, and Katie, I don't know if Katie could see my henna that Becky did. Loved, loved, loved that. All right. So here we go. And you see how you just come in here and kind of, if you've been, in fact, Patricia, Patricia from Nova Scotia, she's a weaver. So she knows exactly this. She could do this so easy, guys. I wish she was here to help me. But she knows how normally you have this thing like a comb that comes down and keeps your fibers close together. All right. Now, I think I'll put a pink one next. So here I went under. So I'm going to go over. So I just lift up. I hope you're able to follow this. It's, I'm hoping if I do it enough, you'll see what I'm doing. This is actually the easiest part. When we bring it up to fold the basket shape, it may be a little trickier, but if we can't get all of that done this time, then I'll save it for another show because I want you, if you attempt this, I want you to feel successful. And that, like I said, the strips, they're double folded and they're 20 inches long and you can glue them or use fusible. I, oh, I, did I mention yet that I starch the fabric first, too? And, oop, I forgot this part. I did a fusible interfacing on the back of them to make them stiffer. Because the stiffer you make them, the more body the basket will have and the easier they are to weave. All right? So now I'm going to go back out the other way because you kind of, you don't want to work just one side. You want to work both sides to keep it nice and square. Oh, Patricia, thank you, sweetheart. Thank you. Okay. Um, let me try this dark one. That might be fun. So here it's under. So this one is going to go over. So it'll go under the second one. It'll go under this one. It'll go under this one. 
I love basket weaving. I need to do it more. Somewhere I've got a box of reeds and um, all the things needed to make a woven basket. And I want to do more of that. I love, I don't know about you all, but I love every kind of art form, um, especially the, you know, the more historic home arts from over the millennia. I love this. So, okay. I'm going to do another one on this side. Let's see. Since I've got so many blues, I'll come back in here with the blue. A nice Alice in Glass fabric that I got from Pineapple. This one was over, so this one will go under. And see how you just hold it and you lift them up. It becomes very easy. You try not, you don't want to disturb any pieces you don't have to. Then you get it so it's right in the middle, right where it should be. Whoops, be careful doing that. Okay. I like doing it on this flannel covered board because the flannel kind of keeps it still. And if I want to use pins at any time, I can get pins out. The strips varied. The, the instructions that are on our website say two and a half inch strips. But I, I use most of the strips I had left over from Pineapple Fabrics. And they were all different widths. So, in fact, this one you see, to make it wide enough, I had to show a little bit, whoops, right here. I had to show a little bit of the selvage on this one to make it wide enough. So, that's why I put the stash, that part up, because it'll be in the inside of the basket and not easily as seen. So, but I, and some of mine, like this light pink is wider than the others. That's okay, because this is just for fun. But I, the strips were probably anywhere from, an inch and three quarters to two and a half inches. And just do what makes you happy. All right. I'm going to come back over to the other side now. And the good thing about going back and forth is not only do you keep it more square, but you can kind of watch your color placement. Because I'm not a natural scrappy girl. So I have to work on being scrappy. So I try to control it a little bit. Okay. This one I went under because this one was over. And that's what makes these things work, is that tucking one under and one over gives it rigidity. It helps keep these in place once you go to the next step. Because we're going to fold this basket edge up, you know. So, just making sure that these are the same length. I can still adjust them if I need to. So... You're just making sure you're still square and straight. All right. I think we're looking pretty good. Might have to pull a couple of these just a touch. But, all right. I spent yesterday with my grand dog, Polly. Gosh, I love that little girl. And I think now I'm going to come in with this color. This one went underneath, so this time it's going to go over. And if you do it correctly, then all you have to do is look at where did the first one start, and you'll be on the right track. Bring it up and tuck it, tuck it in. And feel free if you have to come and go today. You don't worry. I'm relaxed and ready to do this and, and take my time with you guys. We still have left to go see your show and tell. But I'm, I'm, I'll be here until we feel like we're done. Because this is a special women's celebration day. All right. I'm going to go back over this side and use a pink. I tell you what. I love the Alice in Glass fabrics. It makes such fun things like this. I really do like this. Whether you're taking and wrapping this fabric around rope, cotton rope, to make a rope fabric bowl, or whether you're just gluing them together to make nice, stiff pieces to weave with. I'm looking to see if you, oh, what it, this ship, 
Oh. Oh, yes. Now, yes, now they're about a half an inch. But first, see how I folded them? I, I, I took a piece of fabric, folded it in half, then tucked in each side, and it ended up about a half an inch. Yeah, and the fabric that I started with was, it'd be nice if it's two and a half inches, you don't have to worry. But anywhere, inch and three quarters to two and a half is what I ended up using here. And, and they're different sizes, it shows. But that's okay, too. All right. Now I'm going to use another blue over on this side. Okay, it went over, so now it's going to go under. But this to me is fun. I, I could do this all day. Now when I fold it up on its side, then it'll get a little trickier, but it's still. There's, what I love about these kind of projects is there's nothing that you can do wrong. You can always fix it. And so many things, it's like, you can bake a cake wrong, trust me. But this can always be fixed. All right, then this other side, I'll do a green. Now, let me see real quick. Right now, I've got one. Okay, so each side, I'm checking my sides. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oops. I've already done 10 by 10. I had two Strips left over. Hmm. Do I want to put, I think I'm going to take this one out and put this green and then these two I'll put to the side. Okay. So keep, you know, it's 10, 10 this way and 10 this way. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep. Here we go. 10. So now what I've got to make sure is that I'm straight from side to side. Oh, and um, if Michelle is still here, I've got to have a, my left cataract done. But I'm looking forward to it, let me tell you, because I want to be able to see better. Yeah, I like having that green in there. I had so many blues. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a ruler just to make sure. And I'm going to come in here. This make sure this is all nice and tight. That's important. You want it tight and you want it laying flat. And see how I kind of just take my fingernails and pull it in and do it both directions. In fact, I haven't been checking it good enough this way. But just take your fingernails and coax it. Y'all remind me to check on Cheryl Lemon. I haven't heard from her in a while, and I want to make sure she's okay. So, I think I've got this. Okay. All right. So now, let me lean it up to check, and I want to make sure it's straight. Give everything a nice, neat, organizational tug. All right. It look, it's looking pretty good, I think. Now what I'm going to do is measure the ends. And this side, there's six and, well, let, me, let me get the shortest one. That's what matters is the shortest one. Six and a half. Let me look over here. And six and a half. So that, well, this one's, let me, let me this one needs to move down. And this one, six. And this one, six. There we go. All right, so they're looking pretty good. Now I'm going to turn the board around, and I'm going to now check this way. So the shortest one on this side, six and a quarter, no, nope, six. And on this side, whoa, more than six. So let me see how I just hold it and slide it through. I think a lot of, oh, these, these were not as, as straight. This one needs to go back this way. All right. All right. And this is important. This is the only chance you get to do this right. Um, no, I haven't heard from Vicki either. Hmm. Oh, a woven vest. Marsha, that'd be great. Okay, six and a half here. And almost seven here. So let me... 
Almost perfect. All right. All right, so now, now that I've got it nice and tight, oh, let me turn off my light. When the light's been on too long, the camera will dull down. So if I turn it off, then I'll let the light on the camera, the filter open back up a little. All right, I think it's looking pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is come in here and give it a good press. You can't do this when you're doing the woven basket with with uh, wood, so but you can do it with fabric, and I like that. All right, I like it too because it kind of sets the fabric, so it gets some a memory of that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to be folding it up on the sides and doing this. So let's let me see. All right. What we're going to do hold on just a second guys. I'm get a couple pins. I'm going to work on this side. Whoops, I better back out now. Hold on. All right, I'm going to work on these sides. So what I'm going to do is take and pin some of these down so that they don't move. Hold on real quick. Just stick pins, and this is why I like doing this on a piece of foam core if you've got it. And then I'm gonna work on pinning these up here because that way I can pull and twist without disturbing the other side. All right. All right, so I've got pins on most of these up here. All right, so I've pinned this side and I've pinned that side. Not all of them, but a lot of them. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is pick up this side, pick these sides up, and kind of flip them this way a little bit. And I'm going to take this first piece comes over, then it's going to go under, then it's going to go over, then under, then over, and then under, and then over, and then under, and then, okay, and then over. All right. So do you see how that part was done? Now I've got to pull this down. Like this. Okay, let's see. I think I went too too many. Let me just do a few. All right. So this goes from this side. To... Okay, goes over, then under, then over, then under. Okay. Then I'm going to pin this so it'll stay there. Okay. Then I'm going to come back in with the second one and go... Hold on just a second. This is where it gets. Let me let me work this out again. I told myself to practice before I got on here, but I was so busy. So I'm going to pull this up. And what I'm doing is I'm going to keep the weaving going up the side. So this one went over, under, over, under over okay and I think these I only do half because then the others will do start from there all right okay so then the next one will go over 
under, over, and under. Okay. And then, oh, I know what I was supposed to bring. My little clips. Who? Um, so that's the one thing I did forget. I need, let me see, somewhere I have some little clothes pens. I make them all poo. Well, we've gotten this far. Okay, hold on. This is going to be tricky to do it without clips. I may have to finish this. Okay. All right, let me see. All right, did that one for so now. And that brings up a good corner. That's a very nice corner. All right. All right. I need to have, I can't believe I forgot my clips. So, let me, they're all upstairs. I'm going to try to see if I can pin this, but I don't know. You need the clips because that's what's going to help hold it together. Okay, and on this one, and you kind of come up at an angle. I am going to have to do this the next time. That's what I need is my wonder clips. Oh, gosh. Okay, guys. But anyway, what we're going to be doing is taking these two sides and starting to weave these in. Then you leave half over here. You start weaving with that. Then these two halves and these two. And that bridges the corner and you'll see it, then you can start turning the basket up at the sides. And when we get to the top, we'll have to finish weaving our way to the top. Then what we'll do is you will fold this over the edge, tuck it in, and I need all of my pins, and I don't have any of them down here. So I got you to this point, and when we have our next show, we will finish, but I really think you're going to like this basket. And it's going to come out with the kind of swirly woven design that I think you'll really like. But I totally forgot. And these pins, once I fold them up, the pins don't work well. So I have some wonder clips somewhere upstairs. I know I have the hair clips. And I know, I'll show you this pattern. And see how they kind of come in at an angle when you fold the two sides together? This shows better. You fold these two sides past each other, you see? And then when you get them up to the height you want, you're going to trim them, and then you tuck them down inside. And that's what we'll, we'll show you. And then we'll glue them so that they'll stay down in place. But that, you see how the... the the sides weave into each other, whoops, the sides weave into each other, which I love that pattern. Okay, so let me get my wonder clips, and the next time we get together, I will show you that. Okay, but if you want to get to this point and find a way to keep it into place, even if you wanted to tuck a little glue under some of these joints, you could do that, and that way you know this part is stable, 
And I see, I'm so sorry I forgot my wonder clips. So we will finish this. But you're going to do each, you know, by, by doing half of the strips in each corner, then you bring up your basket corners. And then it's just a matter of working those ends together. All right. Oh, Michelle the Quilter. Wonderful. So we will do this next time. Now, this is a good thing to talk about right now. Is I won't be in town next week. I'll be with my Katie girl. And Mark's going to hold the fort down here for me. And uh, But I'll, I'll be out of town next week. So the next show that we have is in two weeks. I'll be back on Friday evening, and I know I want to see you. So the next show is the 23rd of May, okay? May 23rd, I will be here. Now, this also means that I'll be missing two of my Thursday night art quilt sessions. So I won't be here the 13th or the 20th, but I will be back on the 27th. So anyway, so if you're a Thursday nighter, it'll be two weeks off. If you're a Sunday person, there'll be one week off. And who knows, maybe from my son's house, if he teaches me how to do the OSB thing or OBS, I don't know which one it is. But if he can teach me that, then maybe we'll do a quick little uh, practice session. So here is what we have. I'm going to set it aside until I come back and because it's already quarter to five. I'll set it aside <coughs> and I have to have my wonder clips or my wooden clothes pins to do the rest. So let's go look at your photos. Okay. There we go. Turn off this light. And don't forget, send with me and even if I am not um, doing a show I'll be recording your photos to do for show and tell all right here we go let's see let's go up to all right Miss B we sure do love 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 her Yorkshire Gales sheep and she did this with a mixture of painting and all the thread what looks like thread painting and embroidery is done by hand so she used to be a very strong um hand embroiderer that was her form of art but now she's learning to move on to the machine quilting and machine embroidery and she is very talented thank you miss b Thank you so much, and I appreciate She gives me such good advice, and I always appreciate it. And, um, okay, Miss Betty. Wait till you see Miss Betty's koi. I mean, talented, talented. She said, I'm going to do this a little differently. She took my pattern, and using chalk, she marked it onto black fabric. And then using her fabric paints, she painted it. And isn't it gorgeous? I love that. She asked me how I'm going to finish mine, and I haven't quite gotten there yet. Um, I'm still thinking on it. People gave me some great suggestions Thursday night. And she mentioned, what if we did an oval? And that might be worth looking to. So I'm going to look around at different, try to get that inspiration, because I need inspiration to help me. So, but wonderful way to go, Miss, Miss Batty. I love her talent. Okay. Then Miss Bonnie's been busy. She has been working on, Bennett. she has now completed our COVID community quilt. And we started this last May when the lockdown was first in place. And as far as I know, she is the first one to finish it. I love her blocks in between with the trees. I love it. it and it just does fit that wall, doesn't it? Beautiful job, beautiful job. Okay. And then her next thing, 
Let's see what else she has. She has been working on, here's her design wall with activities she's been doing. I love her sea turtle. And I forgot what, this is a gecko. Yes, there's a gecko in there. And then the different row, a row quilt she's working on and the farmer's wife blocks. Way to go, Miss Bonnie. Okay, now let's see where I'm going now. Charlene, look what she finished and it is beautiful. She's got her chickadee right here and beautiful hollyhocks. And then look at her butterfly over here. So way to go, Miss Charlene. I love it. I love it. And her nice big sunshine. Fantastic. Now let's see who else. And I love when y'all change things and add your own touch. This is the binding tool star that I made for my daughter that then led me to make two others that I'm trying to finish with y'all on, you know, on air. So we will get back to this when I get back. I, lo I love that binding tool star. The moment I saw it, I loved it. Oh, here's the basket that we are working on. And on our site is the instructions as I found them. All right, let's see. And this is the part we just did right here, which is setting up 10 this way, 10 this way, and weaving them in. So we will then get to what we were just doing was trying to make the corner. Whoops, not this one yet. Hold on. Where is her corner? Here it is. Trying to turn the corner between the two sides and weave those together. Okay. And then once you get all your sides done, then it's a, a matter of finishing weaving until you've got all the sides, the height you want. So we will do that when I get my, my uh, pens. Because as you see with this photo, they really do help. <laughs> so I can't keep it all together without them. Okay. Keeps wanting to unfold. And just so you, oh, any of you who didn't see earlier, this woman cut her two and a half inch strips, laid fusible on the edge, folded each side in like this, pulling away the paper and, and sealing it. Then once she got these both sides in like that, that's this piece down here. Then she put another piece of fusible, then folded it in half again, and you end up with about a half inch width. So that's how you start out your baskets. If anybody wants the directions I have, send me an email at our time to quilt at TWC. Dot com. All right. Last week I showed you all the plants I got from the nursery. And yes, I have started planting them. So here we go. It is so much fun. I just get out there and play in the dirt. Before I became a quilter, gardening was my passion. I mean, I started thousands of seedlings every year. And Ah, oh, kept the nurseries busy in Maryland. Here is a calicabra. It's it's like a miniature um, petunia, and I love them because they just just bloom their little hearts out. So I've got that planted here. I'm starting to flesh out my pots, and I've got tomatoes and herbs. Here is my braided hibiscus, which I'm so thrilled with. I've wanted one my whole life. And uh, Mark said, why don't you get it? What are you waiting for, 95? <laughs> so, but I've got tomatoes with a little pepper plant in it. These are dianthus and pinks, they are also known as. Getting everything planted up. But, oh my gosh, I love my babies. This is a shrimp plant. I got begonias as fillers. This is a wave petunia, but these are wave petunias. And then here is a lantana with, I guess, hmm, that looks like a petunia over there. But usually I put the begonias around the bottom of the taller plants. And then here is another one of those little miniature 
petunias. And here are some impatience waiting to be planted. These are the workhorses of my garden. They're caladiums, and I love these. They just, it's, it, their bloom is nondescript, but the color in the leaves is amazing. And I love these puppies. And I have so much shade and part shade that they do quite well. This is the, a close-up of that hibiscus. I've never seen anything so pretty. And look at that water drop sitting right there. I would like to turn this in to a painted and thread painted portrait. So that I'm, I think I'm going to be working on. Isn't it beautiful? These would be great in French knots. So I, I think I could do this. I think I could. And here's two of them together on my little plant. And I just oh, love them to death. So thank you, Mark, for encouraging me to stop waiting and get them. So anyway, but I've got a lot to plant. Um, these are, and it keeps me busy. It's, it's the only exercise I like is gardening. Oh, i got to show you. This Nadine sent this as a happy Mother's Day to everyone. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that just beautiful? Thank you, Miss Nadine. We love you to just the muchest of the world, as I say. Okay, now where was I? Because there was something else really cute I had to show you. Ah, uh, here it is. This is a photo of my grandson. And they're eating their lunch, but they're holding hands. And they're just happy to just sit there and hold each other's hands. Is that the cutest thing? I hope they always grow up that close. I love more than anything that both my daughters were just best friends. And now even with my son, they love each other dearly. Because I tried telling them, friends come and go. But siblings are for life, and that's wonderful. All right, and I think there's one more photo to show you here. My daughter-in-law put this up on her site, and this is a picture of her beautiful mother, Veron, and her. And this is a picture of me with my firstborn, Becky, on my chest. We used to sleep that way often. And uh, but I thought this was so beautiful. Thank you for that. And the love that we shared with these babies has has made a difference. So that's really nice. All right. So that's it for the Deb. Now let's see. Who else do we have? Aha, Miss Dolores, and I've got some great things to show you. Now, Miss Dolores, you, rem um, you remember her birds that we showed for a few weeks. It so was just gorgeous. Well, evidently, she's a flower lover like I am. Look at that iris. What a pretty color. Then look at this. It looks like a punch bowl that's been turned into a fountain. I love it. Then look at these irises. Aren't they just gorgeous? These are called bearded irises. And look at her garden out front with all of her irises. Isn't that just beautiful? And you, you tend to find this. People who love art, making art, love color, and it's wonderful. Okay? So thank you, Miss Dolores. Oh, and she did, in all the middle of all the gardening, she had time to get back to work on her um, mountain meadow. And so this is her progress so far, and I think it's beautiful, and I love the addition of the birch trees. To me, when you add yourself to a quilt, that's exciting, and I do love that. So way to go. Way to go, Mr. Dolores. All right. Now go back and see who's next, and that would be Miss Diana. Okay, and she did, this I think is called Little Dots, and it's by Edita Sitar, and uh, I love this. And these are little dots because they are going into a pillow. 
But that is so neat. And here they are on her design wall. And then where is, there's the pillow. And here is the pillow now made with the little dots pattern. I love that. I love it. Okay. And here is, this is a rack that Marty made her to put all of her batting and oversized fabrics on. That comes in so handy, especially when you can roll it out to the length you need and then cut it. Beautiful. We love her space. She is so talented. And then I think this, um, you know what? I've now forgotten what this is, but it's green. <laughs> so, um, and oh, here is, um, I think it's, it's raining or in the rain. Probably another Edita Sitar because she, she and the Dean love her. But isn't that sweet? That is a wonderful, wonderful quilt. Okay, and then she got a chance to go to Linda's electric quilt store. And we all love seeing bolts of fabric there. I mean, is that eye candy or what? Okay. And, oh, look at these colors. Aren't they beautiful? So thank you for sharing that trip with us. Here's a different quilt she's working on flowers around it. Isn't that sweet? And I love she used a batik fabric for the top of love it. Oops, and in fact, I think she had on this board there. I think she has Jamie's Crafty World, hashtag mom life. So that's good. And here is the other side of her room. Look at that. The color is so peaceful and soothing and perfect to get you started on artwork. So I love that. Way to go. So I'm just tickled for Miss Jamie and can't wait to see what she does. I hope she'll keep us posted whenever we can listen to it, look at it, whatever. We'd love to see it. Then Miss Jody, here is her garden gate. And she did each petal individually. That's a lot of work. And I love her sunshine and her gate is wonderful. What a joy. And I think I did tell you that she used, this is the back side of the fabric so it would be lighter. There's the front side so it would show shadow. I just love it. She really thinks about those things like any good artist does. Amazing. All right. Let's see who else now. Come down, Miss Nadine. And Miss Nadine's busy working really hard. So we're not going to see a lot of quilt stuff yet, but she's still doing her photography and then she's taken up rock painting. How cute. It is something easy and quick that she can work on to keep herself going when she's working so hard at her job. So hang in there, Miss Nadine. We love you, and we'll see you when you have more time, sweetie. I know she's probably busy planting on, on her free time, too, because they, her and her husband have such a beautiful garden. All right, Patricia Fry, and love this mess. What mess? This creativity, that's creativity scattered around the room. Isn't that the truth? I tell you what, it looks like I get into my room when I'm being creative and I'm just tossing stuff everywhere. And that's how it lands. But this is her Mother's Day um, gift. And it was a, a beautifully mulched and planted flower bed in front of her house. I'll show you another photo because she lives near the beach. So look at that. Isn't that just marvelous? That looks like a beachside cottage. Way to go. Then she's been working to finish a John Wayne quilt for her husband. And I love her. I love her doggy. Okay. I thought there was one more, but nope. I think that was it. Okay. So now we'll go to Patricia. That was Pat Fry. Here is Patricia from Nova Scotia. And I wanted to show one more time her amazing um, weaving uh, tabletop runner. And it's just beautiful. 
I love that. Okay, and her brand new sewing machine, because boy, is that just the best day of your life? And it looks like it has all the bells and whistles. Plus, she got it on sale for about half price. And that just makes it that much better. I love it. I hope you're enjoying it, sweetie. Okay. And then she made a really cool uh, pen cushion and supply holder for her cutting table. So instead of having all these things laid all around, she now has a neat and tidy organizer and pen cushion. Isn't that great? I love it. The way to go, Miss Patricia. All right, let's see who is next. Miss Sandra, or so I need to find out it's Sandra or Sandra. And look at what she has been working on. And I just love her talent and ingenuity. And she did her own version of koi and water lilies, and it's lovely. Just lovely. Okay, let's see what else. And this koi, wait till you see this fish up close. It is so realistic. She really did a beautiful job on that. And I'm not that good with, well, I guess I'm thinking she might have used ink tints because it looks like watercolor, but I'm terrible at watercolor. She is amazing at it. So that's beautiful. Yeah, it looks like, especially when you look at this water lily, I think she used ink tints. And doesn't it deliver beautiful color? Way to go. Way to go, Miss Sandra. All right. Miss Susan, let's see what she's been up to. And look at this. Isn't that wonderful? I love all of her work. It is just so beautiful. She has just amazed me. She has turned into the quilting queen for sure. Way to go. And, and take good care because I know that they just bought land, a good sized piece of land to put their farm on. So she's got a lot on her plate. All right. But she sent me a really sweet card. It was so touching. And does that, I think that might, be it for right now so thank you so much for sending those photos we love it and we love being inspired by your work so let me come back to y'all hopefully we're all still there we go so anyway and i want to ask is it sandra or sandra so is it number one sandra or number two, Sandra. So, y'all are something else. Oh, yay. That'll be wonderful. Well, everyone, I want you to have a wonderful rest of the day. We will finish this basket because I promise to have the clips up here next time. So, y'all are wonderful. And... Thank you so much for this time. And remember, women make the world happen. And in a most loving, nurturing way. And so I am grateful to each and every one of you. Take such good care of yourself. And do think of one thing you can do just for you today. And I, I would be so happy thinking of you doing one thing, even if it's just playing computer solitaire on your laptop. Do one thing that's just for you today. And y'all take really good care. I will see you not next week, but the week after. Okay. So I, I will still be on the website. So I want to make sure that you're doing well and you're taking good care of yourself. Okay. Oh, my daughter's, isn't that the coolest thing? I just, I feel so exotic now. <laughs> All right. Have a wonderful day, everybody. And you mean everything to me. So please take good care. Okay.